John Cage was the foremost musical experimenter and philosopher of the entire 20th century. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The man wrote some absurd pieces. They showcase his creativity and imagination regardless of what you think of them as music. And many of them, to be honest, really aren't in the traditional sense. I mean, they're all written by a guy who played an amplified cactus. I'm sorry, I, I, just, I just love this. I love this. I'm the Classical Nerd, and these are 10 absurd John Cage pieces. Number 10, Water Walk. Cage performed this piece on a TV show called I've Got a Secret and was actually laughed at by the audience. He played a host of random everyday objects that could be found in kitchens and bathrooms. Number 9, the Freeman Etudes. These solo violin etudes were considered impossible until violinist Irvin Arditi attempted them and proved that they were possible. Cage, who had set aside the sets, proceeded to finish them. They set ridiculous expectations of technical wizardry and were widely assumed to be written to be unplayable. So playing them kind of does defeat the purpose. Number eight, Instances of Silence. Like many of Cage's works that have parts for pre-recorded sounds, Instances of Silence uses a various collection of tapes of environmental sounds. The performers choose the starting point for their tape at random, and the tape simply plays itself out. Number seven, Imaginary Landscape, number four. Cage wrote five pieces entitled Imaginary Landscape, and each one is really weird in instrumentation. Imaginary Landscape, number four, is written for 24 performers seated at 12 radios. Yes, you heard that right, radios. The score calls for channel changes and volume changes, and of course they're going to be different every time given the nature of radio. Number six, 112. 112 is part of a number of pieces known as the number pieces, because they're referred to exclusively by numbers. One indicates it's for one musician, and 12 indicates that it's the 12th piece for one musician. The instructions specify that the performer is to take 640 random numbers between 1 and 12 and say and sing things based on uh, the numbers. Number five, organ two, or ASLSP. This is actually originally a piano piece called As Slow As Possible, but Cage recast the piece for organ. The only direction? You guessed it, play as slowly as possible. Simple enough, right? <laughs> eh, not so fast. While well, actual human performers have taken it as a, as a test of stamina, uh, both on their hands and their ears, uh, a group of Germans had an organ built specifically for the purpose of playing this for an incredibly long time. It is constantly sounding, and will continue to perform the piece with the aid of the occasional performers coming in and messing with the weights that are holding down the keys. But despite over six centuries of continued performance, it's not actually going to be as slow as possible. I mean, one second more and it'll be even slower. I mean, 2640, it's just a number. Number four, WGBH-TV. This was written in 1971 at the request of the Boston TV station WGBH-TV. Cage left a set of instructions for the realization of a short film. So he's not just a composer, he's also a director. He calls for composers and technicians. Eh, really wide open score there. This fair to even call the score a score is written on the back of an envelope. Number three, Atlas Eclipticalis. Cage took these large star charts and mapped them onto staff paper. It's devoid of instrumental designations, articulations, dynamics, tempo markings, you know, clefts. It's just note heads scattered about on a page. So the pieces become very individualized for the performing ensemble. Even Leonard Bernstein once led a performance of Atlas Ecliptocollis during one of his concerts. Number two, 433. It's the most infamous piece, four minutes and 33 seconds of silence. This piece is explored more in depth as part of my Great Pieces series. Number one, zero, zero, zero. Subtitled 433 number two, so you know it's really gonna be good. The full score reads, in a situation provided with maximum amplification, no feedback. Perform a disciplined action. However, you and this turn out to be a little too far out there for old Cage, who later on decided he should clarify his instructions a little. Such as, the disciplined action cannot be an extant musical composition, uh, it must be done all in one go, and you can't repeat the same thing, so it has to be unique to each performance. And the world premiere, Cage came out on stage and wrote this score. I guess he thought he was being meta. Now, these are just my personal top 10 weird pieces. Uh, but he wrote a lot of weird stuff. These ten are just a kind of smattering of the strange concepts he explored. They don't even really focus on some of his greater, more famous pieces. Because sticking things in a piano is actually normal compared to this. 